So as Cindy said in my introduction, um, we are going to talk a little bit today about ways to make your home um, adaptable for Parkinson's or any other kind of movement um, disorder or disability. So getting started here. Um, so a little bit more about me, like Cindy said, I am an interior designer. I am the owner of Blue Copper Design. Uh, we are a full service interior design studio based here in Arizona and our specialty is adaptive design. So what that means is we work with clients and contractors to achieve a design plan that suits everyone in the home's lifestyle. So um, as a wheelchair user myself, I have a lot of perspective on ways to make your home work for you as far as adaptability, maximize the efficiency and the safety of your home. So that's what we provide for our clients and we work all the way through with contractors to achieve that goal with the design plan. Um, personally, I do have a family member who's had a Parkinson's diagnosis for probably 10 or more years now. Um, and they recently moved and I was assisting with making their home adaptable and accessible, which every disability, every diagnosis has different challenges. Um, so we go beyond the ADA and really listen to our clients as to what they need in their design plan. So I have had a little bit of experience with Parkinson's design, um, which has been different for me than any other kind of diagnosis or disability. Um, and then just a little fun fact about me, I have two and uh, being an Arizona native, I spend a lot of time in the pool, which I'm sure most of us do here. Okay, so what I wanna talk about today are some features for um, renovation and then also non-renovation ways to make your home accessible. I get asked these questions a lot. Um, what, if, what should I be looking for if I am gonna go under or go through a renovation process or possibly purchasing a new home? Um, and then on the flip side of that, what do I, what are some ways to make, make my home accessible without a renovation? So first we're gonna start with some tips um, for a renovation. So one of my main goals when we are doing a renovation is to create a roll-in shower. Um, this is actually a pretty simple conversion. So whether it's a, a um, tub shower combo or in, here in Arizona, we have a lot of garden tubs next to stand-in showers. Those are really simple to convert and great, take out the what's existing, grade the floor down and make a roll-in shower. Um, Within the shower, I always recommend adding grab bars, especially um, for people with movement disorders. It just increases safety and they make some really, really pretty ones out there now, which is great. And another great thing to add into a shower would be a handheld shower head. So um, this way you can move the water and direct it towards you instead of vice versa, having to move your body into the, into the water. Um, and then, of course, slip-resistant tile is always a must. Moving outside of the bathroom, um, it's always good to create widened doorways and hallways. So ADA guidelines, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with, require doorways and hallways to be 36 inches. So um, most manual wheelchairs or walkers can get through 30 inch openings. So when we're working with a home, we don't necessarily have to follow ADA guidelines. And that's where we go and listen to our clients, look at the space and create a really custom plan uh, for our clients. So the ADA is great. It's a great guideline. It's definitely needed for commercial spaces, but in your own home, sometimes getting that 36 inch door isn't really possible or would create a lot of problems in other spaces. So um, 30 inches is usually a really great place to start. Of course, we wanna be able to get in and out of our home safely. So doing adding ramps or curbless entries even to the front door or the patio door, the garage door are a really great option for that. Um, there are portable ramps and there are also 
permanent ramps that can be built with concrete and a contractor who knows what they're doing there. Another great renovation tip is using drawers instead of doors in your cabinetry. So in the kitchen, in the bathroom, um, instead of using the doors that open in the middle or on one side, using drawers, usually a set of two or three, could be really a really nice alternative to cabinetry so that you can pull the drawer open and look down and grab out what you're needing instead of having to bend down and always get those dreaded bowls at the back of the cabinet. Um, I included some pictures of some of our projects just to talk about some of the highlighted um, areas of the home that everyone seems to ask us about and bathrooms are a big one. So here are two different examples of roll-in showers. Um, both of these showers have handhelds, which on one of them um, is a little hard to see, but it's there. Now, neither of these showers, as you'll notice, have grab bars. And so that's where the customization for our clients comes in. Um, they didn't utilize grab bars, and so we didn't need to put them in. But there are supports that we put in during the renovation behind the wall um, for if grab bars ever needed to be added in the future because those do, do require some extra supports in the wall, extra studs. Um, that is always a little tricky to open the wall up and put that in. So um, as you can see here too, both of the showers have doors which are at least 30 inches wide, swing both ways so that keeps the shower enclosure nice and warm. Um, and they're also just very aesthetically pleasing. Um, the resale value has actually heightened because of these. And uh, you can just see that there's increased accessibility with both of these while still maintaining a lot of style. Um, oh, it looks like I have a repeat here of renovation and then including the drawers. So we'll skip that one, go down to the second bullet. Um, carpeting is a hit or miss. So this is where we really get involved in our clients' day-to-day -day life, ask them a bunch of questions, and you can do the same for yourself. So with if you are a full-time wheelchair user or walker user, carpeting might be a hindrance to you. Um, it's pretty difficult to push on carpet all day every day um, if you utilize a wheelchair, but um, so that would be a, an option where we would suggest going with some of a hardwood or a tile option, some kind of a hard flooring option. Um, but if you're not a wheelchair user or a permanent wheelchair user, the carpeting could be a benefit to be a cushion on your joints. Um, this way you can have a little bit of traction in your transfer areas, which we'll get to in a little bit, um, without using a rug. So there's less trip hazard with carpeting um, than there would be with a rug. Um, and then our final tip for undergoing a renovation, something that you might wanna consider adding, would be things like a barn door or a pocket door. Um, door swings can be really pesky, especially if you're maneuvering a walker, a cane, if you have limited mobility, um, and if, or even a wheelchair, power or manual. So having a door that slides one way or the other or slides into the wall can be a really great option um, if you are looking to renovate and you don't really have the room for the door swing or you don't wanna deal with having to close the door behind you. Um, here are some more examples of where we have added drawer storage as opposed to door storage. Um, we have two kitchen examples here, and you can see that we did three drawers in both um, examples. The picture with the green cabinetry on the right has some doors incorporated, but we really did make that shift into adding a lot of drawer storage um, to increase the accessibility, eliminate the need to bend down and, you know, pick up those pots and pans that it always gets stuck in the back. Um, and you can kind of see how both of those still very clean and very aesthetic and very functional as well. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now we're going to get into some tips that you can implement into your home right away without a renovation. So it's always good to use stable furniture, um, whether you are a wheelchair user and you let, you know, like to transfer onto your sofa or a recliner or a chair, um, or even just need a little bit of extra oomph getting up. Um, it's always nice to have some stable furniture on a, with some solid legs on a solid surface. So you'd be surprised how there's not so stable furniture out there. And we just always recommend this for safe transfers. Um, kind of playing off transfers again, um, always pay attention to the transfer height and the transfer surface of your furniture. So things like beds, sofas, chairs, we usually like to keep between a 17 to 19 inch range. That's Pretty typical, however, you know, that could vary from person to person. All of these things are very personal, but good to look into, um, especially maybe looking into the future. If you do have a more progressive diagnosis or progressive disability, these are things that, you know, might be able to be managed now, but maybe in three, five, ten years um, might be a little bit challenging getting on and off a higher bed. So we're always about maximizing the safety and efficiency, preserving our bodies as much as possible and not adding more stress by just living in our homes and dealing with our furniture. Um, we always ask our clients the dimensions of their assistive devices. That's such a key thing to know when you're looking to refresh or you know update your space with furniture. We like to be able to have our clients access all points of their space. So fully get around a coffee table, um, be able to get around a dining table into any part of the home. So little tidbit for me, my wheelchair I know is 26 inches wide. So I need at least 26 inches of clearance anywhere in my home. Um, and that varies from a device to device and person to person. Here are some examples of transfer heights um, of projects that we've done in the past. And these, the bed and the sofa are both within that 17 to 19 inch range. So, you know, nothing too medical here. Um, there are definitely options out there to be found and um, just, you know, ways to still keep your style and, uh, and add that function. A few more tips without undergoing a renovation. Um, so like we mentioned carpet earlier, rugs can be a good option. They also could be a bad option. <laughs> so um, this would be something to ask yourself while you're you know, updating your space. Would this benefit me or hurt me? So ways that rugs can be a good option is they can add traction in areas that you are transferring to, whether that's a wheelchair, um, or maybe you just want a little bit more traction to get up using your walker or your cane. Um, they Sometimes those devices tend to slide on hard floors, even when they're um, locked, even when the brakes are on. So having the rugs there, you know, under the bed, under the, um, the sofa can be a really good option. When they can be a bad option is if you're prone to tripping. So rugs can be a tripping hazard. Um, it kind of depends on your ability, but um, there are you know, varying degrees of thickness of rugs that we go into with, with our clients that maybe a thinner rug is more of a trip hazard than a thicker rug. Even using things like rug tape or any kind of secured um, rug products out there tend to wear out from what we've found in the past. So these, this is an option where it could go either way. It could be a really good benefit or it could be more of a hazard. That's just something for you to think about and, um, and decide for yourself. So um, another great thing that does get overlooked are some home tools to keep handy around the house. We like to recommend our clients um, having reachers around Usually we have a few reachers in every, um, in a few areas of the home. This can be great just to get light things off of a shelf or, you know, kind of get those little things that are just out of reach. Things like jar openers, um, button closers, shoe horns, those can all make daily tasks really a lot easier, a lot safer. 
Um, these things also do help with people with limited dexterity. So that might not be so much mobility. A lot more of these are related to hand function, arm function, and dexterity that seems to diminish for a lot of us over time. Um, so our last uh, suggestion is to utilize technology. So obviously technology has been such an increasing part of our lives. We're here today on Zoom, accessing people from all over the world, which is amazing. And we can use, uh, we can use things like that in our home to make our daily lives better. So things like an Alexa, a Google Home, um, I'm sure there's other ones out there. Those are the two main ones that I've used before. They can really connect to pretty much anything in your home from your front door to your lights, to your appliances. And so if you don't physically need to be in a place to turn things on and off, um, you can use your voice from pretty much any room in your home and start your washer, turn your lights on and off. And there's a lot of great accessible ways to utilize these devices um, to turn things on and off that might be hard uh, out of reach, so. And of course, we are interior designers, so we always, always, always add our client style, our personal style into the design. We're very um, much advocates that we don't have to compromise our styles to have a adaptive, functional, and safe home. Um, nobody really wants to ever be living in a hospital when they're in their home, and so we encourage people to stick to stay true to their design style, make their house their home, and hopefully these tips uh, added some a little bit of function for you. So 